This is going to be the next part of our series on taking notes in your Bible. And the other week we did the book of Genesis, and I showed you what notes you would need at the beginning of the book of Genesis. Now we can look at Exodus. So turn to Exodus and get ready to write. The theme of Exodus is Christ our Passover. That's 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Jesus Christ is pictured by the Passover lamb in the book of Exodus. And Israel changes the beginning of their year to the Passover. Just like the Lord gave us a new beginning at salvation. You see, that, that Passover, when they applied the blood of the, the lamb to the doorpost, that pictures you getting saved, applying the blood of the Lord to your soul. And that gave you a new beginning. And Israel changes the beginning of their year to the Passover. And that lamb was a male lamb, just like Jesus. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Israel kills it. Israel killed the lamb, just like they killed Jesus Christ. The lamb is without spot, just like Jesus Christ. It's roasted with fire, just like Jesus Christ, who took our hell while he was on the cross. And uh, he said, I thirst. They roasted with fire, no water. So that's how the lamb, Passover lamb, pictures the lamb of God. Now this is interesting. The first 11 chapters in Exodus will picture you before salvation, living under the devil, or in Israel's case, Pharaoh, in Egypt, which is the top of the world, but then they're delivered by Moses, in your case, the Lord Jesus. So in the first 11 chapters, they're in bondage to Egypt under Pharaoh, and they're, they're looking for a deliverer, and Moses comes to deliver them. You, before salvation, were in bondage to the devil, living in this world, and you needed a deliverer, and you found the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how the first 11 chapters of Exodus pictures your life. Exodus is a complete picture of your Christian life, before and after. Now, chapter 13 and onward pictures life after salvation. So let's do like a breakdown of the book. First, Exodus means to exit. The author is Moses, just like Genesis. Uh, written around 1706 B.C. And Mark 12, 26 shows us that I, Moses is the author. Okay, let's look at a breakdown for the book. Yeah, get your pens ready and we'll do a little breakdown for the book. Okay, chapters 1 through 3, pictures an unsaved man. You're going to see a picture of you in bondage under Pharaoh in Egypt. But that's a picture of you in bondage to the world and un, to the devil. 4 through 6, chapters 4 through 6, Moses, just like Jesus, delivers 7 through 11, Pharaoh tries to stop them. When you get something tried to stop you from getting saved, and then someone tried to stop you after you got saved. That's a Pharaoh of your life. Chapter 12, you got the Passover. That pictures when you got born again, you applied the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're eternally saved. That's the Passover. Chapter 13, you're going to see sanctification. And what do you do after salvation? You sanctify. God sanctifies you the moment you believe, and then you begin a daily sanctification where you try your best to live for the Lord. That's chapter 13. That's a picture of that. Chapter 14, you see a picture of your water baptism because uh, in Corinthians, Paul calls it a baptism when Moses 
and the children of Israel go through the Red Sea. So the Red Sea crossing, called a baptism, what do you do after you get saved? You get water baptized. Number uh, chapter 15, a new song. What do you get after salvation? You get a new song. You trade out your old songs and get new ones. Chapter 16, you're going to see bread from heaven. What do you do after salvation? You get some bread from heaven from the word of God. Chapter 17, you're going to see prayer. Aaron and her lift up Moses' hands as they're in battle. And when, uh, when his hands are up, they're winning. When his hands go down, they lose. That pictures you lifting up your hands in prayer, people lifting, lifting you up in prayer. Chapter 18, you got Jethro's advice. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. Chapter 19, you got Israel at Mount Sinai. Chapter 20, you're going to see the Ten Commandments. Chapter 21, you're going to see laws about slaves. 22, laws of justice. 23, the conquest of Canaan promised. 24, you're going to see the tables of stone, tablets, commandments. 25, you're going to see the Ark of the Covenant, the table, and the golden lampstand. 26, you're going to see more about the tabernacle. 27, you're going to see the bronze altar, the court of the tabernacle, the oil for the lamp. 28 through 30, you're going to see things about the priests. 31, you're going to see the cunning workmen, Aholiab and Bezalel. Men who use their talents. God put uh, a talent in them to, to use their hands really good. And they use their talent for the Lord just like you should be doing. Chapter 32, you've got the golden calf. Where it shows you you're going to have the temptation to go against your pastor. In this case, it was Moses. And to go against God and to go back to the to things of the world and worship false gods chapter 33 god speaks face to face with moses chapter 34 you see the shining face of moses chapter 35 you see things about the sabbath and the tabernacle 36 work of the tabernacle 37 you got the ark the table the golden lampstand and the altar of incense chapter 38 you got the altar of burnt offering the bronze basin, the court, the materials for the tabernacle. Chapter 39, you see the priestly garments. And in chapter 40, the tabernacle erected, and you see the glory of the Lord. But that is just a quick uh, little overview of Exodus, showing you what you can write down. Now, when you start the book of Exodus, you can just quickly read through that, and you, you have an idea of what you're reading. You're not just going into it blindly, not even knowing anything about the book. This gives you a very quick, under five minute read of what this book's going to be about. And you're not just going into it blindly. A lot of times when you read the Bible, you're not familiar with a book and you just go into it blindly. And you don't know what you're reading from one chapter to the next. You just and It just throws a lot of people off and that, I feel like that's why they don't read the Bible like they should. And to further look into the book of Exodus, I've already done a longer overview of the book of Exodus, as well as other books of the Bible. I'm up to Hosea now. Hopefully, soon, by the middle of next year, I hope to have a, a long overview done for each one. But this, I just wanted to make these to show you what you can write in your Bible. Now, if someone asks you about the book of Exodus, you can simply turn to you, this in your Bible, and you can start talking about the things you have wrote down.